Clemson has won, I think, seven of eight ACC championships. They're the favorite every year. They are the slight favorite again this year. That's the key word, slight. So Florida State's in the mix. Um, to me, the, one of the biggest stories in college football, when people talk about the lack of competitive balance over the last few years, has been, number one, teams in Florida, California, and Texas haven't really secured their own recruiting state. Number two, no one has stepped up in the ACC. And so you just allowed uh, statistically the second most talent-rich conference in America to be dominated by one team for an extended period of time. No excuse for it. Miami's been bad. Florida State's been bad. The her- there is horrific football being played in the state of Virginia with no end in sight. And so you've just got Clemson saying, well, if no one else is going to do it, we're going to do it. So this year you got Florida State – I hope for the conference's sake, kind of at the table, but like how wild has it been that no one has stepped up, not for one or two or three years, but there was a call put out, we're going to play dominant football, which normally is a tide that raises all boats, and instead every boat just sank in the conference and just rested at the bottom of the bay. There was this diabolical college football analyst that picked NC State to go to the playoff one year, but there's no need in revisiting that. I don't think we should even discuss it here on the show. However, I think there's a couple things at play here. And, and you know the recruiting landscape a little bit better than I do. And so we could easily sit here and say, well, they've just out-recruited everyone, which would be true, absolutely true. But I also think some of the waves and cycles of recruiting – that if you were to go back four years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, were sort of must have or must do with where college football was, they dominated that portion of it. Defensive line comes to mind. And if you would go back to that Alabama Clemson trade off back and forth, whatever that was for however many years, sprinkle it in Ohio State every now and then, what did all those teams have in common? Dominant defensive lines and dominant defensive line men. Well, then we had a little bit of a shift, probably, and I don't think anybody sat around a big giant table and were, you know, the knights of college football and said, this is how we have to operate. Well, what do you, how do you offset a great defensive line? Yeah, you can say offensive line, but really it's quarterback because he's going to get us in the right play. When things break down, he's still going to be able to make something positive happen. And we have to be able to overcome people who can give us problems there. What did Clemson do? They were dominant in recruiting quarterbacks. Then they put some skill guys around him. And the other part that I think that Dabo had for a long time that not many college football programs that are ultimately successful for a decade plus have is staff continuity. And look at where some of those staff, once they did decide to go leave, what they went and do. You had a head coach at USF. You had a head coach at Arkansas. You had the current head coach at Oklahoma. Certain people will point their finger and try to jab and make a joke and say, well, they weren't successful there. They didn't have a great run there. That's okay. Nick Saban's guys haven't always had great runs when they've gone to coach other places, but it does show you the coaching prowess that Dabo had in that facility with him for a long time. I think there are even other things we could put where Clemson was sort of ahead of the curve. Facilities. Nobody else had a slide. Nobody else had a putting green. Now, with NIL, that looks a little bit less important. People aren't spending their money on that anymore. But there was a time, and I know you remember it like I do, when it was a flat arms race of who could be the silliest and the dumbest with the things that they put in their facility. Because kids loved it. It's kind of like when Oregon said, we're going to have three uniforms for every game. And by God, we don't even know which one we're going to wear this week. You get to pick. We'll roll the dice for our uniform this week. But we got so many, it just doesn't matter. Because the kids love that at that point in time. So certain things come and go. It feels like there was a really long stretch where Clemson kind of knew how to be a little bit ahead of the curve. Who to recruit, how to recruit, where to recruit what to do with your facilities, how to treat your assistant coaches. If, if I'm not mistaken, Venables was the first guy over $2 million a year, right? Yeah. It, it, maybe there was a – I think he was. And so whether it's paying your assistants, making sure you have other guys around you that can help keep that staff continuity together, they were just always sort of out in front. And in the SEC when those things started to happen, mainly Nick Saban doing them, Everybody else sprinted to go get those things. Oh, my God, we got to get a waterfall in our facility. Or, oh, man, we got to go have 72 analysts on our on our staff. They all sprinted to try to get there, and a lot of them tried to bring in a Nick Saban guy to do it with, whereas a lot of those ACC schools just kind of said, cool, we like our coach, so we're just going to kind of see if we can make that happen too. And they got way behind. I, Florida State is catching up. And I think Mike Norvell is doing an amazing job building it, and he has the portal to be able to do that. Is Clemson falling behind from that perspective? Maybe. Um, I I think what Coach Cristobal is doing at Miami is going to work. It's just going to take a little bit more time. 
Uh, and I think kind of, again, this year, NC State could be a little bit dangerous. Yeah, Brennan year. Armstrong, so they're, you're, they're you're, a be, you're a believer in that? This year? Yeah. Yes. I, th- I think I think can be scary. I love the D-line. I love the front seven. I'm, I'm very anxious to see, and we're going to have a conversation about this a little bit later, but sort of that theirs isn't a complete 180, but a pretty big shift offensively. I don't know exactly how how that's going to be consistently good early in the season. 